a brand new law sanctuary just opened up today and I really thought I was going to have to select these different little portals in the right order or I'd have to restart the whole entire event and I don't think it really matters. There are sandstorms blocking us from getting to the final chest. And to undo those sandstorms, you have to hit these portals that actually have colors. There's a yellow one, a green one, a red one, and a blue one. So looking at this, I was like, okay, I'm going to do yellow first, green, blue, and then I'll hit red last. Or it could have had red in the beginning and then yellow, green, blue. But I went yellow, green, blue. And when I did that, it kind of took away sandstorms in the back. And then the red one that I did last took away a sandstorm in the front. So I'm not sure if you have to do it in a certain order or not. But if you do and it doesn't work, then that's the way you got to do it the way I did it, which was yellow, green, blue, and then red. A lot of times these game modes have you do that in a certain order. Otherwise, you have to restart the whole entire encounter. So let me know. That's the way I did it. It did work. I got to the final chest. There is a recruitment scroll over here hiding behind that palm tree. You don't need them though. We're going to do this with all epics. Completely all epics because we've got increased defense of 33% twice. That does stack. And we've got apply a poison to an attacker two times. <laughs> so whenever we get AOE hit, there are so many poisons applied to the attacker. It's, it's really nuts. That's why I say if you have a Gangello, very easy. But really, all the units in this whole entire map don't have very many HP. Their HP pool, their life is not large. It's easy just to DPS them down if you want to. This last fight with Gorel was pretty intense because Gorel was hitting very hard. I can go over here now and select and get the rest of the treasures. I just didn't want to get that one to be in my artifacts. I wanted you to see what I did to beat the whole entire encounter. Defense, defense, apply a poison to the enemy. The rest were just, uh, if you can get additional HP per turn and then increase turn always if you can take additional turns especially if you're just going to dps them down and you're not worried about slow playing with these poisons because it is a bit of a slow play there is on the top right before you get to the boss a really unusual encounter with mognar mognar will take infinite turns he takes four or five turns then he resets that four or five turns he just keeps doing it over and over there was no end to it even though we kept applying poison to him, he kept putting up a shield and he wasn't going down fast enough in life. But he just kept doing this. I don't know if it's a bug or what. But Magnar was just going ham with all these turns. Look, he's going to do this. He's getting poisons every time he hits me too a lot of times. And then he's just going to keep doing this. He's going to kill Connor. He's going to go over there and kill Hakran after about 20 minutes. It just, I don't know, it was really weird to see this happening. And I didn't know if it was a bug or not. So I, I jumped out, of course, to save my team from dying. And then I just made sure I focused him. We came back in and I focused him down with our Charles in the lead. So Charles just kept putting a provoke. He's taking turns, guys. He's just taking too many turns. So Charles came in there and we just provoked him nonstop with Charles. No issues. Charles did his first buff. Look at all the poisons. Did you see that? She did an AoE ability and we just applied, I don't know how many poisons to her. Eight poisons on that one that did an AoE when Balbareth does an AoE, eight poisons go up on him. It's pretty amazing to see all these poisons pop up on all the, all the enemies. It's really easy. And we're doing it with a free-to-play comp. We've got Hakran, we've got Connor, we have a Jacob on the bottom, I believe his name is. And Charles coming in here with that amazing provoke, amazing shield. Charles is the MVP to take out the Gorel. The Gorel at the very last boss hits very hard but doesn't heal himself. And since we were able to provoke that Magnar over and over, he wasn't doing his additional turns. Yeah, I just kept provoking him. He didn't do his additional turns, which is, it was really weird seeing that happen. So if you see that happen to you, make sure you get in there with the provoke. Or if you're an in-game player, just nuke him down. He's going to die really easy. We're going to jump forward to the last fight. We know what happens here. There were no good ones for me to pick, really, spell-wise. So I got 20% additional attack. I wanted additional turns, or I wanted even more poisons. Three stacks of poisons every time I'm hit instead of one. All these fights are really heavy with red heroes. So if you have a bunch of blue heroes like I do, bring those blue heroes in. If you have a strong Nat, bring Nat in to just AoE blow them up. You'll do plenty of damage. Now I did focus on Brand here because I noticed Gorel was doing an insane amount of damage. With Brand's buff, 
and Garel's ability to pierce and take multiple turns, it was pretty nutty. But Garel's not healing here. So I would have focused him. You could just keep provoking him. Again, Charles is just an MVP, right? He's an elite MVP for all these encounters. Just keep provoking Garel. Let them attack whoever they want to attack. We'll apply all these poisons that you see are stacking up. Man, if it's somebody who does an AoE ability like we faced Azrina earlier, every time we hit Azrina, she does a counterattack and hits our whole entire team. She would just throw up so many poisons. Just like that. Look at all those poisons that just went all over him. It's pretty nice, but it is a slow play, but it means that anybody can get through this. The last one we did, we needed to get extra turns because they had high shields that we had to take down. We had to hit them multiple times in three rounds to take down those shields. On this one, I guess they're just giving us a way to get through here as free to play or as a low spender. If you have a tanky team, Hakrin with the additional defense that he gives, plus all the HP buffs, Charles over here giving us... Everything that Charles does with his provokes, his big old shield that he does with his ultimate. And then we've got Connor with his heals or whatever healer you have. Any kind of healer you have. But look, Garel is doing damage on a blue unit. He's hitting really hard. It's cool that he's attacking a blue unit because he can do a lot of deflection hits. I don't know why they're not attacking Connor right now. But they do after about 15 minutes change to Connor. Which is odd. I don't know what's going on with the AI, but they do change over to Connor eventually. And Connor dies. So we're just going to jump forward because playing it this way is a very long fight. It really is. But I'm on full auto. I am doing a full auto. I could have walked away, made a sandwich, got some coffee, and then come back and possibly won. I did need to switch over to, I think... I think Brand was the right play to control Brand so he couldn't do his ultimate ability. The shields are a little annoying, even with all of our poisons going up. And then we needed to provoke Garel to make sure we kept him in line because he wasn't healing back when he counterattacks. Now, if you're having issues with this Garel counterattacking and doing lots of damage, try to make sure the fastest person on your team is a blue unit. And you can use that blue unit to hit Garel. Hopefully, he comes back and hits somebody like your Hakrin for not much damage on the counterattack. Not that he's healing from the counterattack, because he's not, but then he's not going to do a lot of damage. Other people can then attack Garel, because he can only counterattack once per round, and you'll be fine. I'm going to jump way forward now. I think you guys get the idea. It is fun to put up all these poisons. If you had a Gengello, if you can recruit him from that scroll, hiding behind that palm tree, it would make it even easier if you wanted to go that route. But really, if you have a strong Natalia... If you have other strong water-based nukers or even fire-based nukers, they don't have that much HP. I think it would be very easy to come in here with a Connor to put up some shields and then just go to town and nuke them. I did do that for my first two enemies that I faced. And then right after that, I was like, I got to stop nuking them down as an in-game player and see what it's like as a free-to-play or a low spender. And this is the way to beat it. I did lose. It's the last fight, so it doesn't really matter who we lose. We do have a shrine to recover somebody if we wanted to, or we could reset the whole entire encounter and go back through it with everybody back alive. And if, of course, if you lost too many right here, back out before everybody dies and you'll reset the whole entire thing. They'll be at full health. You'll be back to full health and you can come back and try it again. But at times, Garel was really hitting hard. But then we just started provoking him, getting up even more poisons on him, and he just didn't have a lot of health drop pretty quickly and we beat the encounter that's it everyone let me know your thoughts on this encounter i think it's still pretty fun a lot of good rewards in there they're going to put up new ones every week they said i'm looking forward to them it's additional content additional layers in the game for us to focus on and it's free rewards thanks so much for watching let me know your thoughts on this down below and your experience with it i do appreciate it please subscribe if you haven't and i will see you all in the video soon